Oh, good um, morning and good evening and good afternoon to everyone around the world. Today, I'm very honored to um, to have Linda Wells uh, on the talk to share her latest pictures of uh, portrait sessions. Um, so what um, with 8100 Pro? Guys, um, this session will be break down into two parts. First, Linda will spend 15 to 20 minutes to present her ideas and her setup and her concepts with um, or, uh, with her latest photo shoots. After that, it's QA session, guys. So please drop all your questions in the comments and we will answer them during the QA session, which is somewhere uh, between 15 minutes to, um, to the end of the talk. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. Hi guys, hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Linda Wells. I am a wedding and portrait photographer based here in the beautiful Bahamas. Um, and I'm excited to share this presentation uh, using the 8100 Pro and just talking about fast effective lighting using uh, the 8100. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for having me, Aries. Cool, so... Um, Let's get started, I guess. So let's get into this. So like I mentioned, I'm Linda Wells. I've been shooting portraits and weddings for about 11 years now. And um, these are all my handles. It's my name, Linda Wells. And let's get right into the session. Let's get right into what I've been doing. So um, we're lucky here. So I'm based in the Bahamas. We are not on lockdown anymore. We are under curfew. So I took advantage of the fact that I could roam around and I took um, a model, a friend of mine called Sean. We went out and this was actually my first time using the AD100 out on location on a shoot. Uh, so I was really, I really just wanted to play around with it and see what it could do. Um, so I have the AD100, I have one with the AKR1 kit that has the modifiers, the magnetic modifiers in there. So for me, for this session, and it was a personal shoot, I really just wanted to play around and see just how powerful this little flash could be. You know, it's, I know it's 100 watts, but what can it really do out in the field? I'm a type of photographer that when I'm shooting portraits on location, I like to be quick and I like to be effective. Um, so the first slide here is just testing it out. It was, um, so just to give you an overview of the day, it was just an overcast day, complete cloud cover. Um, so hardly, you know, there were no, not much contrast. And I wanted to see just how powerful this, this flash can be. So this is Sean. This is the first shot of the day just with the barn doors. So I decided to start with the barn doors. And the reason why I wanted to start with the barn doors for this is I just wanted to control the light using the, the doors and just keep that light focused on her. Um, you can see this is my lighting setup of that. So she's sitting against the wall. I've got uh, the 8100. And I want to say also that the 8100 is so small and so light. I didn't really feel like I needed an assistant. I just had it on um, a light stand, and that was it. With the bracket that came with the with the with the flash, the pocket flash itself. And so you can see my settings here with bundles. Now I always start with really low power because I'm trying to just gauge how much I need and what type of look I'm going for. So at this point, it was at 164 power. Um, and you can see here, um, I like that. And I said, okay, let me add, let me add uh, the orange gel that, you know, that comes with it. And if anybody hasn't seen the um, AKR1 kit, it does come, I have some samples here, I have some here. So it comes with uh, these uh, magnetics. So they just slot in here and they slot uh, on the head of the of um, the flash uh, pops in here. And then it's everything is magnetic. So it just pops in there like that. So this shot here is at 164th power. It still had the barn doors, but I added this gel to it because I just wanted to change the color temperature. I had mentioned that it was a really overcast day. So the lighting was like super flat. 
And I thought, well, let me add a pop of color. So you can see um, there is a slight shadow right there behind her. That's because the power was like super low and um, it, 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 was, it was acting almost more like a fill light. It was bouncing off that wall and back. And um, I really loved this location. It had this, it's a coffee shop. It had a mural outside and she was, I just felt like she was the perfect model for this. So in using the, um, in using the splash for the first time, a couple of things that I noticed and I really liked about it, it was just really easy to move and place exactly where I needed it to be. It wasn't like big and heavy and clunky. It was, it was just really simple to adjust to what I needed it to be. So for the next shot, I um, went ahead and I wanted to add a little bit more power to the um, to the shoe. Uh, let me. Oops. Can you see? I am. Oops. Hold on a second. I'm trying to get down to the next slide. Um. Sorry. My no worries. Too easy. Uh, I'm trying to get down. Let's see what's going on. Give me a second. Of course, <laughs> something always happens. Yes, so this was that. So what I wanted to show next is that, so I then increased the power because I was looking for more contrast. I'd mentioned the light being flat earlier on. So I wanted to increase that. So I increased the power. I wanted more contrast. I wanted more saturation of that orange gel, right, on it. I really wanted more of an impact on that photo. So. All I did simply, I have the X-Pro trigger. Let's just increase the power. I kept my settings um, with exactly the same. And I simply increased the power from 1 64th to 1 16th. And you can see now on the right side of her, this strong dark shadow. Um, the light was in front and slightly above her. And I just love um, the tones that you can see here. Um, that you can see that are created with the with the orange um, gel from and the barn doors, still controlling the light, still making sure it doesn't spill over too much. Um, so, so we move. This is just a uh, more of a full length shot, so you can see just the the nice warm tones that that gel. And I love the way that it contrasts with that mural behind her like the orange the coffee spilling out the cup the cup and things like that so it was literally i was just really having fun and trying to see just how much range i could get with this with this you know pocket flash and, and just having fun with it um in the next slide and that and this is just um a lighting diagram so you can get a good idea of exactly the light placement on the light stand and with the gel and where the positioning of, of Sean the model is. So then we move, so this is a, like I mentioned, it was a coffee shop. So on one side is a mural and then on the other side is this sort of dark tinted glass where the front door is. And I, pardon me, I decided that I wanted to move over there and change modifiers and also just um, reduce my exposure and just get a more moody, more contrasting um, image. I wanted this, I wanted it almost to look as if possibly we were like in a dark space or darker space. And so when I shot this um, shot, so we'd moved her, she changed wardrobe into this back black dress. You can actually see um, my placement right over here on the right hand side. You can see that little glare right there. So I had placed the, um, I moved the position of the, the light, it was still on the stand, placed it behind me to the right of the camera and captured this shot of her. And I always like to feather my light. So even though it's on the right, it's turned slightly to the left of her. So the light is falling away from her face. Um, I just find it just is a more flat flattering effect when I feather the light. I typically do feather the light um, for this. So we had, so I had moved it and on, um, so for the modifier for this part, I had taken off the barn doors, I had taken off the orange gel and I had 
uh, there was um, a dome over it. So it's given a nice diffusion of light, spread very evenly. The light is also pulled back from her. So it has, it spreads in, a, you know, in a nice, in a nice way. And let me move. I'm not sure. Every time I, uh, every time I, I move the slide, it, um, something happens. Yeah, yeah. just keep this, just keep the yeah. slides. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. I just, there's a little arrow there. You can actually see a little bit of the reflection of the head right there um of the flash and then the light you can see the spill of the light because you can see the highlight down her leg and down here like it's it's directed it's coming this way and falling off to the back of her um so that's how i like to keep it and i like this because it's just a really smooth a really even nice light really quick to do and and just creates a great effect and the next one is um here so with, there are some plants right in front of like when you walk into the coffee shop there's like a whole bunch of, of plants right there so i had gone they're actually snake plants which i love which i have some right behind me <laughs> so i had gone behind the snake plants and you can actually see the reflection of them right here and i just cho i chose a little opening to um photograph her i do this for different reasons it's something i do a lot in my photography it creates interest layering um, it draws your eye to the subject contrasting colors um, so and I just loved the way that she kind of leant forward and put her arm over so um, this was just uh, another image using the AD 100 which I really love because at this point I had increased the power and I think you can kind of see that with the shadows that you can see falling off from the chairs as well. And just the, the um, highlight on her cheeks and stuff like that on her legs. So this was me having um, a little fun with um, just composition, lighting, and just uh, a little bit of everything. So you can see here that it was at one fourth power. I was shooting at high speed sync. I'd mentioned I've mentioned before that it's a, it was a really sort of overcast, but bright. it was bright, but flat. So my, my shutter speed actually went right up to one thousandth of a second at S um, uh, 2.2 and ISO 30. I'm trying to see, trying to open this up so we can see this. Um, like 31, it was like really low ISO. And this is, uh, this is my lighting diagram. Forgive the uh, red roses. <laughs> that is uh, just to show you that I'm shooting through. Um, and then we move on to, um, so what I had done was I asked her to sit, I asked Sean to sit against the wall, against the glass. And I sat directly in front of her. And I asked her to lean to lean back and then look at me over her shoulder almost like a beauty portrait really strong sort of really good eye contact and i was getting the reflection off the glass as well that was the whole point in shooting it like this um now at this point i just love the way the light falls off um on on her i did make slight adjustments from the previous shot um i moved it round a little bit um and in the next picture uh i went ahead because it's one thing i love to do and if you follow me or you've seen some of my work i'm a big fan of using gels and color and colors in in photography and lighting so right before we left i said to her you know i want it to feel almost like we're in the studio so i dialed down like my exposure um increase the light and i decided that i was going to add a gel um to this and um, it wasn't one that came in the uh because in the kit that i got i got the greens and the and the oranges so but i had a blue gel and i was not gonna let this you know get away from me so i added the blue gel and we were able to shoot this and i think it looks almost like a studio portrait in a way um so i was able to increase the power on that to get that saturation of the blue gel and just create that really really strong portrait of sean um yeah so that was out in uh sort of in a bright day and so what i wanted to do with this shoot next 
which I did recently, was just see how the 8100s works at night. You know, just how powerful, how much light am I going to get uh, when the sun goes down? When Because I do like to shoot a lot of nighttime portraits as well. So I, I gave myself a challenge of just one, just the one 8100, nothing else to create some nighttime portraits. This was uh, done about, um, it was like blue hour. It's about just before eight o'clock. Um, and I decided to use for the first time, um, I used the snoot. I just used, put the snoot on the head. Um, and the reason why was because I really wanted to focus the light on this model here on Andre. I didn't want too much of a spill. Um, I didn't want to highlight too much of the leaves and the trees and you know, anything like that. Um, I wanted to keep it on him and I was able to do that. And I, I have to say, this this was so easy to do because once I had the 8100 on the light stand, I had the snoot on, I got dialed in my power just right. I was really able to balance the ambient, get that blue, that, you know, blue light, blue hour and balance it with the light that the, you know, the 8100 was giving. I didn't use any other modifiers, no no gels, nothing like that. It was just purely the 8100 with the snoot directed. You know, I made sure I angled it so it was hitting him and falling off his face. So here he is just leaning against a tree. And um, I used the, the, I used some atmosphere aerosol behind him, just sprayed a little bit to make it a little moody and contrasty. And um, the next shot that you will see is this was a tree stump that he was leaning against. So I asked him, to stand up on it. Um, and the stands that I use are, uh, I think they're 12 or 13 feet. Um, so I was able to just lift up the stand and still hit him like with the 80, uh, 100 from quite a distance. I have a pullback shot because I really wanted to show, um, how effective. Um, so this is him standing at the top of this tree stump and he's got to be about, about 10, about 11 feet up in the air. So I'm shooting up, you know. And so here is um, a pullback of that. So he's standing here on the tree stump and this is the the um, the light stand. And I'm using the S2 bracket as well here because I put it in there. I wanted, I wanted it to be secure because I'm, you know, I'm by myself and it's got the snoot and you can see it's still quite some distance from him and it's lighting him. It's just giving him this nice, even lighting right here and so and that is really how i created just these shots and then this we started having a bit of fun i was like could you jump off you know and i was i wanted to i was doing i did this for two reasons one because i wanted a nice interesting uh composition and and portrait but another reason was i was just seeing wanted to see how powerful that recycling time on the 8100 was like could it give me an action shot could it freeze him you know whilst he's jumping off and it did we did this a, a few times and we just had to adjust not because of the light failing but because his arm kept creating a shadow in front of his face when he was jumping so i asked him just to keep his arms back or down um so this was um the 8100 in action multiple times I'm shooting on, you know, high speed on my camera, my Nikon D850. Um, so we had enough of this, we kind of moved away and this is just a, a lighting diagram of that. And I was looking for something interesting um, to do. So there's um, like an abandoned building and uh, I asked him to sit in front of it. And at first I had just taken a plane shot and then I realized when I looked around that there were two bushes, two plants like next to him. And because we're shooting at night, I was like, I can create an effect like a gobo with the 8100 by putting it in the leaves and just positioning him so that he can hit a patch of light. Okay, so I've got a pullback shot here. So here is the. 80, 
100 right there with a dome and that is all that it had on it a dome and i literally just uh, lifted it up and down until and i was test firing until i felt that i had this nice patch of light um that his face or his eyes could come through so once i had that locked in i didn't change the power i simply just positioned him i asked him to pose so he did various things. You could see here, I love just the light hitting his eyes and just his face in this in this shot. And then um, I asked him to move and to just sit back against the wall. I really was looking for like this dark and moody like look. I wasn't looking for anything. And I purposely kept my um, exposure under. I was exposing for the highlights and just letting that flash just do its work and it performed like really well i am in love with these photos um i did one with black and white i feel they're almost like perfect imperfectly perfect like they're a little bit grungy and uh, a bit like that and so that was uh, those are two shoots that i did on location i'm going to finish off with um a client shoot that i did um real quick we were kind of we were pushing to the, you know, like when you've got like hardly any time left because you've got time limits of the shoot and we've got this location and I shot them. It was beautiful to look at, but when I placed them there, it was, I was underexposed and I had an assistant and I just gave him the 8100 and I just said, just point it, just point it at them. <laughs> so he, he did it. He did that. And you can see this glare. This is a reflective surface, but it did give me, uh, a, you know, a balanced exposure on them. So what I did in trying to, you know, in delivering was I ended up compositing two shots. So one with them and then one with the room without the uh, the flash so that I could get rid of the glare because I was so pressed for time. I didn't, you know, I didn't tell, give him, give him enough direction to where to place the flash. But what I am happy is that they are now perfectly exposed in this indoor space. And um, the AD100 was actually super powerful. I didn't realize just how bright and illuminated the, the room would be when I put it. I don't, and to be honest, I wasn't really paying that much attention to the power setting. And then finally, uh, I'm just gonna share how I used this. I was uh, with another client and I wanted to create um, sun, sun flare, like a sunset. We were, we were finishing up and I said, oh, it'd be nice to do that. So the sun is actually not, this is the AD100 with the orange gel right on it. So I had my assistant point it directly towards, off to the side and directly towards the lens to create a sun flare. And I wasn't sure whether I was happy with that way. So I, I had the assistant move to the other side. I was like, can you do the sun from this angle to pretend to, it's the sun? And I love the way it kind of illuminates the grass and, and the leaves behind as well. So that is not real sun. That's just the AD100 working as a flash. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So that was my fake sun. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's how I use the AD100 in shoots to create like some fast, effective lighting that I know will just work. Thank you, Linda. That was great. I quite enjoyed the fact that um, you were, um, you started with um, natural look, started with natural look. It's almost like um, um, light and airy. But guys, here's your tips with a flash, right? Uh, flash is a flash. It's a tool. And it's still depends on the photographer what kind of look you're going for, right? When you have less lighting contrast between the ambient and the flash output, which means uh, more natural lights, less speed, less flash, you you will, you tend to have a natural look. But when you underexpose the ambient, you have a stronger flash, relevantly stronger flash output, you tend to have a dramatic look, like what Linda had. <clears throat> I quite enjoy the blue hour photos as oh, well. Thank you. And then then Linda showed us some, uh, some fantastic, which I personally, epiphany, which is you can create a beautiful afternoon pocket patches of lights like a gobo you're referring to from a night right isn't it it's yeah. it's a night shot but it looks like a beautiful warm afternoon which is yeah. fantastic and then linda ended up 
with sharing us those beautiful, quick and easy lighting tips, which is light composition, right? Take two shots if it's too, if you're in a rush and your, um, I don't know, waiting planner tell you, <laughs> don't worry, take your time, you have three minutes. <laughs> right, we all had that, we all had that. We and do. Yeah, and us waiting photographer, we don't have the luxury to waiting for the perfect sunset like landscape photographer. Um, 8100 Pro, um, I wouldn't use that to combat the sun, but you know, during the sunset session or you know, in the blue hour, you can still create a pocket or mimic a pocket of a um, golden hour sunset, yeah. which is doable. Um, lots of time you guys were asking us how bright is 8100 Pro. This is what 80, exactly what 8100 Pro can do to um, show you what it can do in an intuitive way. And we certainly hope that helps. And I love, I love the, the talk. Thank you, Linda. Oh, Shall we? You. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Should we jump into the Q and A session to answer everybody's question? I was just looking over. Yeah. And I can Guys, see drop all your question uh, in the comments, and uh, Linda will um, address them one by one. Yeah. So thanks all everyone right. for tuning in. I can see lots of people from everywhere around the world. And the first question that I'm reading is, "What was my favorite modifier of the AKR1 kit?" So I've played with pretty much everything. And you know what? I really love the snoop. I really did. Um, I like my lighting to be controlled. I do. I'm a big fan of grids and, and things like that. But in this kit, and the grid is great, but I, I, I enjoyed um, just the way that this was able to just direct and control the light for me. So this, and it's really easy. It was so easy to, to put on. So yeah, the suit is my favorite out of that little kit. Uh, what was the white balance when you're using the gel? Okay. So I keep my white balance on auto pretty much, uh, all the time, except for if I'm in a, a reception room that is, uh, really has been lit, then I'll adjust it. So it was on auto. Uh, what else? Love your composition. Where do you get my ideas for composition? Um, where do I get my ideas? I I follow, uh, and I'm a big fan of a lot of street photography, street photographers, and I have some really good friends who are street photographers. And it's all, for them, it, a lot of it's a lot about framing and composition. Uh, with street photography to make it effective. So I am, um, yeah, so that's where I get my ideas from. I pull I pull that in because I do shoot street as well. And I pull that in when I'm, when I'm doing portraits, either for wedding clients or for regular clients. That's where I get my ideas from. Yeah. So, um, hello, just again, it's, um, it's your personality and it's the, you know, it's the book you read, the movie you watch. It's about that's who right. you are. Yeah, yeah. So it could be it could be coming up. It's a, it's essentially a, a form of arts, so it can come. Um, it, the inspiration can come with all sort of media, like the the yeah. exhibition, you know, anything, the magazine, the fashion. Or your, right. It's it's relevant with your background as well. Yeah, actually, in in saying that, yep. also, I'm a big fan of um, watching um, food. Food, food shows and I'm not talking about like where they're in the kitchen I'm talking like so like um chef's table I find the cinematography in that oh, my interesting and I will watch and it it really inspires me like the plating and things like that and, and I'm sure it feeds into my photography as well yeah hi is it possible to shoot a wedding with just 180 100 pro any tips for creating lighting shots thank you it's absolutely possible to shoot a wedding with 180 100 pro it depends what type of wedding you're shooting um so you that needs to be clarified are you shooting a small intimate wedding are you shooting a large wedding um typically um i think i definitely think it's a it's 100 watts it can be done and it's, if you're thinking of post you can do two things with that you can use it for the larger group shots with a larger diffuser like an umbrella um using that or which will give a nice even lighting and cover your subjects and you can also definitely use it for the creative lighting shots i mean i am 
a big fan of creative lighting is one thing that I'm known for. And this wouldn't limit me in any way. I would be able to use it um, using, you know, the grids and just uh, all the tools that come with it, the barn doors. You can do a lot with it. In addition to what Linda said, one more question for your uh, Francis is, would you be using on-camera flash, right? If you're in a dark church or if you're in a certain uh, getting ready, bright getting ready room in a relevantly darker area, which you are a one-man team, you need some on-camera on flash, uh, you'd better get a V1 as well. Other than that, like, Go go for it, eighty one hundred pro. I I would agree with you. It's a it's a perfect, you know, yeah. run and gun kind of photo for creative, yeah. uh, wedding photo shoots because it's so light. Like Linda said in the presentation, you don't need um, uh, you don't need a lighting assistant to hold the lights. That's the best part. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And you know, and just thinking about it with a wedding I just shot recently, um, you know, if you if you were shooting dancing reception shots and you had a trigger on, either you using your V1 as a trigger or you didn't have a trigger, you can actually, you know, hold this above your head and shoot at the same time. And this is small enough so that you'll be able to get some really nice contrasty um, images of, of reception dancing and things like that. So it's very, very possible. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you. Yes. So, you know, it's definitely, uh, um, yes. So 8100 does have a modeling light. It absolutely does. And uh, it, um, yeah, it has a modeling light. So here we go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yes, it does. Uh, please camera and lenses used for the couple. Um, I think at that point, definitely my camera was 80, uh, sorry. Nikon uh, D850, uh, that's my main body. And uh, that lens would have been most probably the 35. I don't think it was a 24. I don't think I went that wide. But so it must have been my 35, 1.8 Nikon lens. Cool. In the lighting through plants. Yes. Yes, it was the dome. It's this, it was the dome right here. So the reason why I used the dome and I didn't go do you uh, do a bare bulb for that was because even though I'm shooting through the shadows, I still wanted to soften the light and to get a more even spread of light um, using the dome. And it's just, you can see how it just clicked on. It's just perfect. It just sits right on there. Wait, sorry. Um, it's I'm okay. Lost. I lost track. We're, uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> That's uh we have lots of comments here. Um good vibes. I don't have to worry about too much about overpowering, so, so I'm loving the perfect. Yeah. 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 So I think yeah. If you have a cloudy day all the time, you don't have to wor worry about overpowering the sun. 8100 Pro might be. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You use it for yeah. fill light or you mm. know, creative lighting. So yes. And the gel kit is very portable. Very mm. I actually, um, what I do, I, I don't have that with me right now. The Godox actually has um, a creative uh, gel pack, which comes separately. I think I think I think oh. costs about ten or twenty bucks. It's okay. a square gel. I just, you know, use the don't clip to click that gel over, and that's yeah. it. Clever. So that, that that's something uh, you can you can do separately. I think um, they originally made it for the S thirty, which is the. Uh, um, those gobo lights, LED gobo lights for video, for okay. doing videos. But that actually works perfect. Oh, um, I've seen that on you. I can't wait to get my hands on that. I'm gonna have so yeah. much. Yeah, <laughs> I just find it's quicker, quicker than uh, than the plastic. You kind of have the clicking. It still takes you a couple of seconds for that gel. And I can stack gel. I can stack multiple gels to get a really yellowish or really greenish or bluish sort of effects, which kind of works perfect. Uh, for my uh, for my style of photo shoots. Uh, which modifier is good with the AD100 Pro umbrella or softbox? So um, I used the umbrella for the first time on a shoot uh, just this couple of days ago, and I was pleasantly surprised the amount of light I got 
you know, soft, beautiful light. It was, I used it for a maternity session, you know, and it was beautiful. I used the, I think it's my 130 um, uh, umbrella. And that was, it was, it fit perfectly. I used it with the S2 bracket and I, you know, mm-hmm. slid it in. So it was perfect. Um, softbox, I, I haven't used the softbox uh, to date with it. So I've only used this kit and an umbrella and I love mm. the umbrella. It was great. Yeah. Personally, I would agree with Linda. Uh, simple, I would use umbrella over softbox. The reason is um, if I use 8100 Pro because I just want to travel light, right? Um, even 8100 Pro works with both umbrella and softbox. If you want to stick with one man team, be bear in mind you have to carry the softbox or umbrella by yourself. That's the assumption. Mm-hmm. Umbrella is a way lighter to carry around. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if I have to carry that myself, I would just carry the umbrella around with me. That's all. Yeah. Uh, if I have assistant, I'll probably just use softbox, but I would use 8300 Pro. Yes. <laughs> because I have assistant anyway. So I would That's combine. Good. Yeah. Since since my assistant is there, I'm just getting to carry um, heavier light, so I have more freedom in terms of creative shots. If I want to have some um, do some quick and light setup, be mindful that even with QR um, QR series, which is quick release series, mm-hmm. it takes a bit longer time to set up softbox and umbrella. So because 8100 Pro it's so light. It's uh, 8100 Pro. It's probably the lightest of camera flash, and Umbrella is probably the lightest modifier. That's true. This combination will be quickest uh, to set up as well. So I would say I would agree with Linda. Uh, Umbrella with 8100 Pro is probably yeah. easier to go. Mm. Have you tried 8100 bigger modifiers so far? I haven't. Uh, like I mentioned, the uh, the umbrella is the biggest modifier that I've tried. I have the is it SB one thirty, um, and that is what I used, and it was perfect in that. I don't think I would want to use in anything bigger than that. Yeah. Personally, yeah. that's my my personal uh, preference. Yeah. If you, I would agree with Linda. If you want to think about using bigger modifiers, why don't you just use bigger light? Yes. Uh, it's probably it probably makes more sense, right? Because exactly. anyone on your pro is round head is designed for run and gun kind of photo shoots, which Linda did today. If you want to stick with a softbox all the time, um, AD three hundred pro and beyond, it's probably uh, more suitable for your kind of shots. Be mindful that eighty one hundred pro is. Uh, it's for now head, right? Because it's pointing to a certain direction. Even though with a dome, you can diffuse in a um, different direction. Uh, it's still uh, designed for run and gun kind of photo shoots. But 8300 Pro, it's a strobe. So naturally, it diffuses lights to almost like 180 degrees. Yeah. And uh, it's naturally designed for the bigger modifiers, such as softbox or octabox, mm-hmm. which you mentioned. So if you're thinking about something to work with, um, Bigger modifiers, AD three hundred Pro will be probably more uh, yeah. better lights, more suitable to go to. But you've already got an AD one hundred Pro, yes, by all means, just yeah. combine those two. Yes, it's workable, and I did use that before. It's absolutely uh, all you need is just um, S two type brackets to adapt yeah. AD one hundred Pro into the softbox. That's it. How do you match images throughout the shoot if, all it, if it takes all day so you get midday sun go? Um, so you always use... Well, first of all, okay, I want to talk about the first half of this question. How do you match images throughout the shoot if it takes all day? And you're talking about different lighting scenarios here. So you're talking about midday sun, golden hour, and evening light. I think the beauty of a shoot is that the lighting shouldn't all match, especially if you are shooting in that hard midday sun. You know, a lot of people don't like hard light, but hard light can be so beautiful and dramatic. Golden hour, we know what that looks like. And then, you know, blue hour evening light. So I don't think you, I feel like you can still tell a story that the shoot is all encompassing, but the lighting does not have to be the same. So if I was doing an all day shoot, I would be telling the story of the shoot, but 
I would be telling it using the fact that the lighting is changing throughout the day. And I'd be taking advantage of every bit of that light. So if I'm shooting in the midday sun and it's throwing super high, um, harsh um, shadows, I'd be working on my composition and playing on that. Um, golden hour, I would be using posing and, and composition as well to highlight that. And it says, do you always use AD100 throughout all looks to make images cohesive? So for all these shoots that I've shown you today, yes, the AD100 was the only flash that I used. Um, and I don't always use a flash if, if I feel the image um, doesn't, if the look I'm going for doesn't warrant it. Um, but throughout all these, I think I showed about three or four shoots here. They, I used an AD100 throughout all of those. Oh, I can't hear you, Aries. Sorry, I, I put myself on the mute. Sorry, <laughs> accidentally. Um, I don't want to interrupt <laughs> your talk. So another perspective you can look into it is uh, Claude Monade. He has a series of painting called Water Lily through the day, like midday, hot sun, golden hours, evening light, exactly like what you mentioned. It's different color, right? Like what uh, Linda said, midday, harsh sunlight, golden hour, a bit softened, and evening light even darken and further, further, um, further bluish uh, cast. It look, it's designed to look like a cohesive um, series of paintings which I think if you look at Claude Monet's series of water lily painting, that will make a lot of more sense in a, in a way. It got nothing to do with a flash. It's, it's, it's the feeling you want to deliver, really. Mm -hmm. Well, that's there is no um, hot shoe attached. The 8100 is not designed to be an on-camera flash. That um, would be the V1 um, that you'd be thinking of. There simply is no connector. There's no hot shoe to you know to attach for for the AD100. So as far as I'm aware, I'm not sure who um, someone's got a hack or something. But but I wouldn't even want to put this on my camera just because the you know the the way, I just don't want this weight and how can I direct this you know on like where do, where am i pointing this on my camera so it's not designed it's, it is it is a pocket flash is designed to go on a stand or with an assistant something like that it does it's not designed to sit on the camera is it compatible to be controlled directly by the canon or do you need to buy a specific dedicated godox trigger i am a nikon shooter but i know that you need a trigger um, to fire any flash, um, whether you use a actual uh, speed light and use that as a master and these as slaves, or you buy a, tr a transmitter, a trigger like the X-Pro. Um, so you, you will need a, something to trigger the flash, whether that is a speed light or a trigger, which is much easier to use and the way you, you, you know, you can control, um, your zoom and your which channel and which group you're on which is you know that's the whole beauty of of triggers the, the wireless system allows you to to control and and give as much power or as little power as you need um when you're shooting with a flash so yeah i would recommend that you purchase a trigger <laughs> oh. i think he does need a trigger like it's <laughs> yes, yeah I was going to say, we couldn't hear you, Aries. Yeah. Have you tried to place more than one modifier? Yeah, absolutely. I like layering. Oops, my lighting just went. I like layering um, my, um, my, my modifiers. So I have, uh, I have done the, uh, like I, you saw, one of them had the barn doors and the, and the gel. I've also done the um, grid and the dome. Um, and you know, that's a great combination, a grid and the dome. You might wonder why would you focus the light and then put the dome, but it's, you, you are focusing the light and then you are diffusing the light. So it does give a, a different effect. So I'm a big fan of layering. So layer away. 
Shall we go back to the slide? Yes, the blue gel. Yes, it was outside. Um, you, it was the the same. That shoot was done. Uh, hold on, let me. Am I still sharing my screen? Hold on. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me go down to show you this slide here. Yeah. So this was the same. This shot was this shot was taken minutes after that. So you can see in the background it is daytime. So all I all I did was I just dialed down my ambient light, um, brought it all the way down um, by either increasing my shutter speed. I can't remember exactly, and then increased the put the gel on and just increased the power. So that's how that was done. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, great photo. Well done. Do you use the modeling light? Uh, no, I don't use the modeling light much at all. No, I don't. Um, Should I stop? Funny things you talk about. Th funny thing you talk about modeling light because I was shooting another food photographer the other day. Mm -hmm. I was hanging out with him. He was using eighty one hundred Pro. Um, he used modeling light all the time. Because he, what he's, we, you know, when food photography, you have, the lights needs to be particular, right? Because he's just use the modeling lights, just make sure the bundle is going to the same, you know, exact sort of direction, and half of the lights is kissing at the glasses, and half the lights ah. at the middle of the glasses. So I would say modeling lights. During the daytime, outdoor might not be working, but with studio shots or night shot, night shots, yeah. it, it just under different scenario, mm -hmm. right? It might yeah. work, but it's not a it's not a huge bright forty watts modeling lights. Just just you know. Yeah. And the harsh sunlight means again, and does not sell to nine p.m. and we have no trees uh, either. An 8300 can yes the 8300 can absolutely do you do you mean the 300 or the 100 because if you're talking about the 8300 yeah the 8300 can absolutely um counter the harsh sunlight depending on the power you set it at and your f-stop yes um here in the Arctic, the sun does not set to 9 p.m and we have no trees for mars either um okay but you know if you're talking about trees as a as like a gobo like how i use the plants it doesn't have to be a, a plant or a tree you can have you can use anything that has shape that can throw a shadow you know you can use that to create some sort of effect if that's what you're if that's what you're referring to francis i'm trying to figure out where arctic is arctic. In arctic. i'm gonna assume it's up north, <laughs> very cold. Like, oh, there. Yeah. Oh, way up there, past Alaska. I'm just yeah, trying to. Like, I'm trying to Google on the Google map. Also, I'm like, yeah, where's Arctic? Tell us where exactly you are. I mean, I'm intrigued yeah. now. <laughs> no, sounds exciting. I mean, it's not the yeah. light I'm worried about. I'm worried about you. How would you? <laughs> is, isn't that cold day? He says it doesn't set till I, 9 p.m. So they have all this sun all day. Yeah. I would I would assume it's uh it's similar to Iceland kind of I would assume it's uh, similar to Iceland kind of um yeah. kind of environment. I would say 8300 Pro yes, it's it definitely works. Uh it's uh, you it will help you to combat harsh sun. We all know that it depends on which body fires you use. Mm -hmm. How far would you place the lights um of your subjects? But from my experience 8300 Pro would work. Would work. You can either use it as a key light to combat the sun as a harsh light source, bare bulb or with standard reflector, or you can get an umbrella as a soft fuel light, not so much counter the sun, but feel the shadow lights uh, yeah. when to balance the sun in a sense. If you need a bit more power, you can get an 8200 Pro, which is equivalent to four uh, which is 1200 watts, which is equivalent to 48300 Pro as together. Um, if you need a bit more power, just to know there's another option there for you. 
That's such great questions. Yeah, it's always a great question. I haven't seen it, but I know oh. that on the Godox, um, funny enough, on the on the on the Godox YouTube page, I saw a, a video on contrast lighting that they did mm. recently. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if um, it could, it could be used like that. I don't see okay. why not because it has Ooh. modeling light. And if you are Ooh. talking about to really key in on certain things like labels um, with video uh, mm. or photography, um, why mm. not? That's something I'm not an expert in that area mm. for sure. So Godox, so Godox has a, um, a SA17 adapter, basically adapt, um, you know, um, 8100 Pro or 8300 Pro into the uh, gobos, the lighting gobos, um, the optical gobos. Um, the gobo actually comes with a lens, which is 85, 65, and 130 lens. And it comes with all those uh, little, you know, gobo different pattern shapes, allows you to focus um, the lights in an articular area like you mentioned here. So check out um, the S, uh, S, S30, S30 modif uh, uh, accessories that will help the lights to focus on certain area. Even though the accessories were designed for S30, you can sort of adapt it uh, for your 8100 Pro as well. So that's the beauty of using Godox sort of ecosystem which the modifiers are interchangeable with adapters. Hope that helps. Like dancers. Um, not dancers, but like I mentioned with the second shoot in the blue hour, just um, um, jumping and moving. I don't typically shoot dancers, um, but uh, you know, I think just like anything, you've got to know the, understand the tools that you have, uh, you know, what can do. It's it's like if I was shooting a fast moving subject, I know that my camera needs to be shooting at a high frame rate and, you know, and then, um, you know, to the recycling time of which one of my flashes I use. Um, but I feel like as long as, when you know your your equipment and your gear you can you can have it you know perform for you you, you know as you need it to so i yeah that's how i feel this is where i think you should go to the actual local store to give a go I try to figure out what sort of power you need for example you need the 8100 pro at 1 16th power or 8200 pro at one out of 128th power mm -hmm. because when shooting dancers we we don't use full power, are we? We try to capture as move as many movements as possible. Are you the guy who's shooting 20 frames in a second? Or are you the guy who's shooting three frames in a second? Figure out your lighting pattern, uh, figure out the, how fast yes. um, you want to shoot and how much power do you need. Go to a local store, see the um, the key here is recycling time. See if the, the, the recycling time of the light will match to your needs. It sounds to me, it's there's a huge difference between you should pew, pew, pew per second or you should do, 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 yeah. uh, un, un, you know unstop for twenty seconds. So figure out your you know how much power, how how fast you want the light to recycle, and go to the store and try it out. Personally, I wouldn't use any one hundred pro. I would use any one hundred pro to do one or two jumping shots for the icing on the cake, like what Linda did. But if I shoot a dancer all day long, I would do, I would use 8300 Pro for location because it's light. I would use 8200 Pro in studio because yeah. it's the fastest recycling time with the same power output. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to, let me, I just want to touch on that in full transparency. So at the very end of that blue hour shoot, um, I asked um, Andre, the model, to, to, to do a fast-paced movement where he was coming towards me and jumping 
or mm. like, you know, he's a, he's a track athlete. So I was asking him to do something like, you know, running or something like that. And I found that at the end, and it wasn't a very long shoot, that shoot maybe at the most 25 to 30 minutes. But at the end of that, even though the power on my battery was saying still full, it was still full, mm. the recycling time just couldn't keep up with what he was doing. So I was able to just get one shot um, out of, how many frames and you know i wasn't even guaranteed that that was going to be a shot that was uh, you know in the action that i wanted to do so i in 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 using it for that those five ten minutes i know that if i'm going to be shooting dancers or anything that's fast moving i am not going i'm going to whip out my 8300 I'm taking that with me that I know can keep up, can perform and do what it, what I need it to do. Yep. Is a light bright enough uh, is uh, to reduce pupils when the studio, I'm not sure about, I, I don't understand the question. Do you, do you understand? Yeah, I think, you know, when you, in the dark area, the uh -huh. pupil might just go go oh. bigger, like a cat. Think about the cat. Oh, uh, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not I, me. Me neither. So sorry, buddy. We we couldn't answer that question. <laughs> I never. Um, it wasn't ever a worry for me, so I never. Um, I never look into those. Yeah. And also, I just want to go back. If you if you're worried about darkness and pupils of eyes, then you could use a reflector for catch lights. Or you could, you know, center the light so that it, it creates a catch light in your eye if you want yeah. some illumination in the eyes. There's many different ways of creating catch lights. Yeah. Just, I'm just there. I think it's worried about the demon, demon demon kind of look, you know, you have a huge pupil <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm in the Toronto area. What do you think about AD200? Okay, so I'm going to talk about this because Aries was watching one of your videos earlier on yeah. today, and you said yeah. that it was, it was like 8200 was like a long relationship you'd had with someone that was very faithful, and then you meet the 8100, and that's like yeah, your... I know. <laughs> I know. I want to say yeah. that the 8200 is my favorite, favorite blast. The 8200, I, I love the 8200. I uh, it's um. It's something that I don't even think twice about. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you do get a lot of sun in Toronto area, like I get a lot of sun in the Bahamas, you can use 8200. I tend to stack them up. I like the way they fit in my bag and just the ease of them. So you can stack up two 8200s together if you need that 400 watts of power. But I am a big 8200 fan. Um, it's uh, I use it in like 90% of my work and it's, it's for me, it's enough, uh, it's enough to, to give me what I need. And when it's not, I stack them up and I have two. Um, yeah. So I think definitely the 8200 can work for you for that. Yeah. Oh, we have answered that question yes, already. So, yeah. that. Uh, why not try out the Fuji film camera with Godot? I actually do have a Fuji camera um i use that for my street photography but because i use street for uh, use it for my street photography i don't use the flash um i'm trying to be as discreet as possible and get the shots i need so i don't use uh flash but if you're talking about you know regular fuji um with uh, for your work you, you can absolutely um use a godox you know godox is for every every type of, yeah. of camera you just need the Fuji trigger. That's all. Yes, you just need the Fuji. Make sure it says F on that trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I find it's funny, but yeah. I will say, well, first of all, the biggest thing is that the V1 has a hot shoe and can sit on your camera, and the AD100 does not. AD100 is not an on camera flash. So that is the difference. Are you somebody that likes to have a, a flash on your camera or are you someone that prefers to direct the light for it being off camera? Um, they're different in, in wattage and power output. 
and um, they're both round head flash so modifiers will fit on both of them the modifiers that will fit on the v1 will fit on the ad um, um 100 but you're gonna get less power if you put that v1 on a light sand in, a, in an umbrella that's you know you're gonna get less power than you're putting the ad so it's definitely a personal preference for me if I'm if I have to pick one out of the other, it's going to be the eighty one hundred because it gives me more power. Yeah, V one. Go for V one if you need on camera. If on camera flash, um, on camera flash is essential. Go for eighty one hundred Pro. You will get a bit more power, faster recycling time, and a slightly better performance with high speed sync. And I think here we have a last question here. Oh, she yeah, asked. Just asked that. Well, yeah, I just I just answered it. <laughs> yeah. Personally, personally, I will go for eighty one hundred Pro. I just find it's easier to fit in my bag. Yes. That's that's your it's your thing. Think, think about the I think about the camera bag you have, right? It's yeah. very the eighty one hundred Pro is similar size with your thirty F one point eight. It's mm -hmm. similar to a prime lens, like fifty GM or thirty five GM with a Sony, because I'm a Sony user, it's easier to fit in my bag. 80, with 8200 Pro, because I use round head with it, yeah. it's a bit long and bulky. Okay. Okay. It's similar size with 70 to 200, like lengthwise. I know it's not as big, as bulky as 70 to 200, but when I add a round head, it's actually kind of long. It's harder to fit in my bag. Uh, you I see, just prefer. I, I don't yeah. use my 8200 with a round head. Yeah. yeah. So I, I use front head all the time. Yeah. yeah. So that's why. Yeah. And you know, yeah. as a primarily a wedding photographer who yeah. is there from daylight to nighttime, and mm. my clients know me for creating like a signature nighttime portrait. I mm. need the power. I need that power to last me right through the yeah. end of the night, so I can create a really beautiful yeah. panic shots for my clients. So mm. that's uh, that's. But that for. Works. If I'm running out, if I have a, a portrait session and I've run out, mm. to, yeah, that 8100 is the first thing that I'm going to pick and put in my bag. Yeah. Another thing is with 8100 Pro, it's easier for the adapters for the um, for the AKR1 ecosystem as well, like what Linda used today. It naturally, um, that's another consideration because naturally it will fit the round head at IKR1 accessories. When you get 8200 Pro, you need to separately purchase the round head, which I think I, I can't remember the, the model number, the round head in order to use the AKR1 accessory. So, so that's a bit extra cost for you as well. But it's your personal preference, as I said. It is. Yeah. I think that's all the question today. Oh, Thank you so much, Linda. It was a great talk. It's been great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. I do have more content on my YouTube channel. You can follow me, Linda Wells. Just search me and my handle for everything else is Linda Wells Photography on yeah. Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest and everywhere else. So besides Linda does great portrait and she does lots of great creative wedding as well. If you follow Linda on her Instagram, um, you will find all her work there. She does put a lot of um, lighting setup and BTS in her Instagram as well. When you look at her Instagram work, you'll figure out more what she talked about, you know, the, the difference by using the flash for the natural look and the dramatic look to create some afternoon image in the midnight or uh, in the total pitch black uh, environment. Just follow her on her Instagram, you'll, you'll see all her BTS there. And through her Instagram, you, you can pretty much find her website as well as YouTube channel, um, which she put lots of BTS videos there as well, just in case you guys need a bit more details. Thanks Thank so much, Linda. Thank you, Aries. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'll Bye. see you guys until next time. Bye. Bye.